Are you looking to learn how to needle fold? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to teach you how and to do so, we're going to be making a strawberry seahorse. and welcome to today's video, Strawberry Seahorse Needle Felting. My name is Iceland and on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting tutorials like this one and have needle felting videos and share product reviews from time to time. So if you're new, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links down in the description below this video or leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. And as always, please share these videos where you can. Now, let's get started. So today I wanted to make a strawberry needle felted seahorse with you guys because I have been wanting to make these for a few years. Since I took this photo with Sindel and that was when we lived back in Oregon and we've been in Hawaii for over three years now. I saw the strawberry seahorse on Instagram. I thought that's perfect. Sindel, our little strawberry, that's the nickname we call her. And we love island life and seahorses and sea life. So I thought it was just like super fitting and then also growing up in the strawberry fields, my father being a strawberry farmer and my grandfather and uncle and that was partly why we'd done the whole strawberry pictures in the sink and just her being a redhead and Micah always calling her Sindel, his Sindel strawberry or his little strawberry. So to get to the point, when I went to look up a strawberry seahorse, I thought this was just a theme. You may or may not know, but I love needle felting and crochet and the first thing I found was a crochet pattern for a strawberry seahorse that a crochet artist in Oregon created. I thought it was a theme, maybe it is, I don't know where he found it. Either way, I was like, how cute would one be needle felted too? And so if you want to see more of this guy's creations, his Instagram handle is not bad. I'll type it here because it's spelled K-N-O-T-B-A-D. He makes tons of cute stuff. And now for everything you're going to need to make your strawberry seahorse. All right, to begin, you're going to need your needle felting needles, some foam surfaces. I like to use two, one for when I'm working with bone color, the other when I'm working with the colored wool. You'll want some bone colored wool for the filler. Green and red are your core parts of the strawberry, and then a little bit of gold and black for the eyes and the seeds. And then a fabric tape measure if you're wanting it to come out a specific size or not, and then a pair of scissors. As well, this will help trim your project up, make your strawberry seahorse look nice and complete. And don't forget, I'll have all this stuff linked for you down in the description below. You can go check out more there. To start, you're going to take out your felting needle and put it into your foam pad if that's what you're working with or wherever your needles are held. I love how Clover USAs come in the little boxes to store them in when I'm not using them. Now, depending on how big you want to make your seahorse, you may or may not need a tape measure. I'm making this one little just around four inches, which is also a great size for a newborn prop or even a little smaller. So then grab your wool. If you have bone colored wool, this is great because it felts together really well being a blend of fibers and you won't have to use as much of your colored wool. A little more wool here. All I'm doing is just rolling it together and folding it in to see what it feels like once it shrinks down and is more firm. Get an idea of the size. I'm going to want the head just a little bit bigger than the body and then enough for the tail part. And you also can get an idea of how big it's going to be once you make it all firm. You can really see it shrinks. And now it's time to start felting. I'm going to begin with the body. Again, I'm going to roll it down all nice and firm and just start piercing the wool with the needle in and out, straight up and down, not at an angle making it kind of ball shaped because this is going to be a 3D seahorse. Have a back and a spine and the tummy, a little face and a nose. This extra wool here on the back will be part of the back of the seahorse. So I'm felting it from all angles, turning it, and there you can see it's already starting to make some progress. Now you're just going to want to continue felting this until it's completely firm. And as we go here, we'll add on the head and the tail. Okay, so now you can see we've been felting it for a while. Just wanted to give you a little bit closer look here. What I'm doing. Constantly turning it, felting it from all angles 
creating the shape I want. Be super careful you don't pierce yourself on accident. Now you can set the tummy aside. It'll be time to work on the head. So you're gonna need your larger ball of wool. I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't want this to be very round. And in the back, how you made a little spine on the tummy, you're gonna do the same here. It'll just be a little smaller. And pretty round, because it's baby. Little baby strawberry seahorse we're making here today. Okay, and then we're gonna need a little nose. And I wanna do this as I go. I'll just take a little bit of wool, pierce all around here, and I'll continue to shape it too. But I want it nice and attached and part of it. And leave still a little bit loose here to attach onto the tummy. I still want to make that spine along the back a little bit. I'll attach the green. Just continuing to shape it as I go. So you'll just want to keep needle felting this so it's nice and felted and firm. set those two aside and we're going to get enough to do the tail you didn't pick that out already I needed a little bit more and you're going to want his tail to have a little curl up and an in and then you'll leave a part to attach to the bottom of the belly see nice and curled like that So you can see the tail, I'm just giving a little bit of a curl. I might end up cutting on it some after I attach the red if I want it to have a little bit more of a point, because points are really hard to create. But for now the goal is to just get it nice and firm. All right, now that you have your tail made, it's time to attach all the pieces together. Look at that, it's even looking like a little baby seahorse, how cute. So now to attach all your pieces, you obviously with your head have enough wool here, you can attach it onto the body like so, by spreading the wool out, and then we're going to felt this on, just like this around the neck. All those fibers nice and tucked in, because if you start felting this way too much, it'll ball it away. You want to get it nice and firmly attached. Time to work it back the other angle. Okay, they're getting pretty firm together. And now for the tail, do the same thing. Spread the wool out, and then you're going to attach it to the bottom of your seahorse. The same way you attach the head. Alright, so look at that. There you have the start of the seahorse. So now that you've got it all attached into one piece, you're going to want to use some time here and get it really firm and felted and smoothed out. Add any wool where you need to add wool and then you'll start to coat it with the color. I'm gonna get the belly a little bit more wool on mine. And then even a little more for the back of the head.
for the next step, you're going to want to start covering your little strawberry seahorse in red wool. I'm going to use my foam pad that already has a patch of red area that I've been working on. I'm just going to take the red and I'm going to cover all of it except for this back part where we will be adding on the green on the head as well. I'm going to take a little amount, start to attach it by felting it on and piercing it into the wool. Grab a little bit more. And then continue this method until your seahorse is completely covered, no white spot showing, and the red is completely felted on. If you want to add your green here, you can as well, along the back of the ridge. So that way you're creating straight lines and not felting the wool into each other as much as possible. So now that you have your seahorse felted for the most part, you're going to want to work on the little back fins. So the best way to make these look a little bit more like fins is take a little bit of wool and at every so many intervals you're going to felt some extra wool on there just like so. And then the next one you can do a little bigger and then continue this all down the back until it's completely finished. Can see the next one's kind of done. Going out on the third. There, you see how that's looking? Then just continue it on. Now that you've finished that part, you can go ahead and set it aside for a little bit. You want to take just a little bit of your green wool, and you're going to make little side fins for your strawberry seahorse. These are pretty simple to make. You're not going to want them too big, and you're going to need and leave a little bit of loose wool where you'll attach it. For the most part, you're just going to flip it back and forth and fill each side. Because this is such a little piece of wool, you're going to need to take some patience while waiting for it to fill. Give it a little bit of shape, create a little bit of a line down each side, just like so. And you can do that on both sides, see I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do that. And then add a little bit more wool if you want. This one side needs a little more here. And then just have consistency felting. You can see it's taking shape. You're going to want to make two of these, so get the other one started as well. You want them the same size as much as possible. So just repeat that same process.
All right, then once you've finished the fins, you're gonna wanna attach them to each side. You have your scissors. Cut a little spot for where you'll attach it on in. And then just felt that extra fiber right down inside. Give it a little bit of a curl if you want. As you're felting it down in, just pull the fibers more center. Just like that. There you can see. Do the same thing on the other side. they're even now that you've attached fins to your seahorse it's time to add on the little seeds to turn it into a strawberry this isn't going to take very much wool I'm just going to want to roll it into a little ball in your fingers for the most part you want these to be the same size and just make a handful of them or two for the belly, depending on how seated you want it to look or not. Now just take each little piece and pierce it in. Make each seed look a little bit like a teardrop and oblong. You know, the point at the top and around or bottom. Now you're going to use the same technique with the black and make two little eyes. Make them the same size as much as possible. And you're going to want to attach them on each side, just above the nose center and even just like that all right and now you are almost finished with your little strawberry seahorse look how cute that looks oh my gosh i cannot wait for sindel to see this are you making it what does it look like probably a dinosaur or a strawberry seahorse on the front one by myself you want to make your own yeah i will be very careful, Mommy. So lastly, you just need to go all around your little seahorse and tuck all the fibers in, smooth it out, make it as firm and clean and nice and tightly needle felted as possible. While you're doing this, it's a great time to remove any excess fibers that you know aren't gonna get felted into the project. And this will help you smooth it out a lot too. Once you've finished trimming it and tucking all the fibers up to your liking, you'll be done with your project. And just like that, you can make a needle felted strawberry seahorse too. And here it is complete. All right, and that's it. That's everything you need to know to make a needle felted strawberry seahorse. Learn how to needle felt. Be a fiber artist too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Go check out Not Bad. Get inspired. If you like needle felting, crochet, knitting, I think those all fiber arts are excellent ways to have a creative outlet in your life. Lastly, don't forget to leave a comment if there's something you think I should felt next. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy felting. Bye.